media industry, blogging and podcasting have emerged as new ways to connect with the audiences. They are not only gaining popularity quickly, but they are also a great place to work. Hello everyone, this is a fantastic opportunity to discuss blogging and podcasting as a career option with all of you. Blogging and podcasting are emerging industries in India that are rapidly expanding. The COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown have increased the use of these channels which are being launched on a daily basis. The industry is in its infant stage and has yet to realize its full potential. This makes now an excellent time to join the media industry and contribute to its growth. Let's get to know these two new emerging career options in detail. Who is a blogger? A blogger is an individual who contributes to an online web blog or platform. The content on their websites or blogs is developed, edited, uploaded, distributed by bloggers. They share their knowledge and expertise on an online portal. Individuals in blogger career create content, services and products to serve their target audience. There are probably millions of blog posts available on the internet and bloggers have the potential to relate with millions of people every day. What is the role of a blogger? These individuals generate new, original material just a few times a week using pictures that really enhance their content. They research other blog posts with relevant titles and good reference information and maintain a presence on social media such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and Pinterest. Bloggers share their material on the internet, create links, manage comments, and respond properly to every comment. Types of bloggers On the internet, there are 600 million active blogs, accounting for one third of all websites published. Starting out as online personal diaries, blogs have grown to become influential sources of information on virtually any topic over the last two decades. The top 5 most popular types of blogs are Food blogs Travel blogs Fashion and beauty blogs Photography blogs and Parenting blogs What are the skills required to become a blogger? Some of the requirements to opt for a career in blogging are Creativity Communication skills Social media skills and Marketing skills now let's move to podcasting. What is podcasting? Podcasting is the information exchange using audio or video files that are released in the form of episodes on the internet that can be played on devices like computers, smartphones, iPods or other portable media devices. Individuals who are responsible for creating and distributing are called podcasters. The most stream categories are sports, entertainment, personal finance, spirituality and self-improvement, current affairs. Skills required to become a podcaster. If you wish to grow as a podcaster, you need to harness these nine skills. Speaking skills. You need good communication skills to keep your listeners glued in your podcast. Audience and niche. It is very important that you know your audience and niche very well because your topics and all your marketing efforts will be targeted towards them. Listen with empathy and address your listeners' pain points. When you do a podcast, you also need to build an effective relationship with your audience. You should make your content relatable to your listeners because this is one of the things that makes them stick around. Use your voice to convey emotions. You need to learn the art of using your voice to convey emotions and keep your episodes fun and captivating to your listeners. Time management and flexibility Time management is necessary for podcasting. Yes, it's enjoyable to watch or hear an episode, but it takes a lot of work to produce a quality show on a regular basis. Organization and task delegation You need a plan and system for your podcast to sustain. The crafts may not be necessarily difficult, but you have to be committed and consistent if you want to grow your audience. Grow your audience. New podcasters probably have less than 100 subscribers, but over time that number increases in hundreds, thousands and even millions of listeners. Craft interview questions. 
Interviewing experts also give you the opportunity to enter into your audience's mindset and get unique insights that you have never heard before. Keep the super listeners. Super listeners consume twice the amount of podcast content compared to generic listeners. A super listener will not only consume your content, he or she will also help you grow your audience by sharing it to others. How to become a blogger and a podcaster? A degree in mass communication will open doors for both these industries. So now, the big question is, how to enroll yourself for a degree in mass communication? Some of the premier mass communication institutes of the country are Indian Institute of Mass Communication, AJK Mass Communication Research Center, Jamia Millia Islamia, Anti School of Communication, Lucknow, Xavier's Institute of Communication. The eligibility criteria for a bachelor's degree is 10 plus 2 from any stream and for master's degree graduate in any discipline at least 50% marks in aggregate at the graduation level. Some institutes conduct their own entrance exam at both levels which can be followed by a personal interview. This exam aims to test general awareness, creativity and aptitude of a student. Life at a mass communication institute Like the course, the teaching pedagogy is also very unique. Students do spend time in the classroom learning the theoretical aspects of the subjects as well as on the field, applying and experimenting with their ideas. Besides academics, there are a lot of clubs like photography, theatre, filmmaking, news writing. The average package is between 4 to 6 lakhs per annum for both the fees if you join an organization. Bloggers and podcasters can work independently as well. The package keeps on increasing with your experience in the field. When you choose this industry, there will be no dull day on the profession. Greetings everyone. For this episode of the Lamat Nia Careers Fair, we have with us an eminent personality in the field of mass media and communication, Mr. Akash Banerjee. Sir needs no introduction. However, just to rodomontade on the fact as to how amazing Martinians are, allow me to give you a brief introduction of Sir. Sir is the founder of the Desh Bhakt channel on YouTube, which is India's first political and largest satirical platform with millions of subscribers across multiple social media platforms. It aims to shed light on many vexed issues faced by India with dollops of sarcasm and satire. Showcasing Mr. Banerjee's innovative prowess true to the spirit of his alma mater, La Martinia College. The Desh Bhakt gained a huge following of millions in just a span of four years. There is also a story behind this. Sir had to quit his job, sell his house for being able to fund his digital startup. That is how much perseverance was included in the entire process. We shall surely delve into this as we proceed with today's podcast. And also to mention, Sir previously served as the Vice President at India's biggest, best, most listened to radio network, Radio Mirchi. His role included mentoring and growing a team of 100 plus radio professionals across 15 radio stations spanning from Srinagar to Shillong. Before that, he spent close to a decade in news television covering a wide range of stories from across the Indian subcontinent. From 2611 attacks in Mumbai to the Maoist menace in Dantewada, from farmers' agitation in the Nandigram, Singur, to Vyasar's chopper crash in the Nalamala forest of Andhra Pradesh. Besides specializing in disaster and conflict reporting, he has extensively covered political affairs of Times Now and Headline Today. Sir also anchored prime time shows for these channels. In the year 2013, Sir condensed his reporting experiences above and published Tales from Shining and Sinking India, perhaps the first and the only book in India that details the real world workings of news channels the deadlines, the pressures and the thrill of getting the pictures first from the field. The book now is a part of suggested readings of many media schools. All of this boils down to manifest that Mr. Banerjee is a man with a proactive approach who has painted the canvas of his dreams with the colours of consistent and persistent efforts. That is what all of us must also learn from the guest today. Sir completed his schooling from Lamartney College, Lucknow, then moved to Delhi for his graduation and post-graduation in history from the Hindu College and St. Stephen's College, respectively. It's a pleasure to have you, sir, with us today. And I firmly believe that all the viewers are surely going to take a lot from this podcast. It is a pleasure to have you today, sir. And it was my distinguished honor also to introduce you to all the viewers who are going to watch our podcast today. Thank you so much for being with us. Pleasure is all mine. Pleasure is all mine. 
So, since podcasting is a subfield of mass media and communication, and you are one of the most eminent personalities in the field of mass media and communication, could you please help us understand what exactly is podcasting and what is the work of a podcaster? Um, you know, I think uh, what has happened is we have uh, made podcasting into uh, something which is uh, you know very complicated to understand, or it's very different from you know uh, what is happening uh, in the other parts of uh, the internet, including, for example, this conversation. So what is this conversation, for example? I am talking to you virtually. One could use Skype, one could use Zoom. We are having this conversation. Uh, this could be a video conversation if it is put on uh, on, 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 fa- on Facebook or on, on, on YouTube. Or you could distill it in an audio format and put it on a Spotify and then it becomes a podcast. So first and foremost, um, let's be very clear is that podcast is just another means to get to the audience that may or may not have the time to a do video that you may not have the time ability or the resources to do video and it is an audio one of the biggest things i have seen and people debate over it is is podcasting about two people having a conversation and i have been trying to answer that question myself also most of the podcasts that you'll come across is yes two people having a conversation and the third person being on the the listener being on the fly on the wall and is listening to the conversation Um, but trust me if i tell you from my radio experience also is that radio has been a hit format for decades continues to be a hit format in many countries and will continue to survive despite the onslaught of television of 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 of, of mp3 of internet it will continue to exist and then you have a single person only talking to the audience uh, because the radio jockey really has the ability of connecting directly uh, with the audience so for me a podcast is nothing more than a audio version of what you might do for example, on Instagram, on YouTube, but in an audio format. Why would you want to do it in an audio format? A lot of people I have also come across are not very comfortable facing a camera. I have seen many, many people uh, do successful podcasts. But if I tell them that, why don't you then just put a camera and just do a video podcast, put it on video, put it on audio as well, they might not be that comfortable. Please understand that a lot of people are also okay to have a conversation one-on-one with just a recorder kept on the table rather than cameras and lights flashing on ourselves. So that's where the podcast comes into use. And the consumption pattern will differ also that a lot of people want to just hear a conversation or hear a voice instead of going through the whole thing of actually watching a video. But essentially, if content is to be seen as a podcast content, a podcast channel is just giving you good information, entertainment, engaging with you uh, and giving you some sort of value, whether it be laughter, whether it be information, whether it be conversation, but just adding value. Perfect, sir. Thank you so much for that answer. Um, sir, also pertaining to what is happening in the status quo that recently podcasts that often cover self-development, skill development and hold one-on-one conversations with people who have found success in the view of the general public. Can you explain that how has this changed the outlook of people towards podcasting and the talk shows which as of now persist in India? You know, there are many people who are far, 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 far more successful uh, than whatever little Deshbhakt has been able to achieve. They all say the same thing and I would like to repeat the same thing. You will not be able to survive on the internet, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, unless and until you are doing something that you are genuinely passionate about. So right now, it seems the buzz in town is that self-development is huge. And how do you make it big? And what is your morning affirmation? And how do you make a million dollars? And how do you flip properties? And that seems to be the in thing. But trust me, beyond a certain point of time, there'll be oversaturation in that market also. I'll just give you the small example of Deshbhak itself when we launched. I mean, satire is a very niche area in India. I mean, the most common comment we get is, you have such good information. Why can't you just deliver it seriously? Why do you have to do all this tamasha baji? But that's what we are. We, we, we don't want to do news seriously. We want to do it in a fun way. Um, so, so choose your skin, whether be it podcasting, whether be it, uh, you know, broadcasting on, on YouTube. You have to be comfortable with what you do. I know that there is a lot of appetite right now that people want to, you know, understand, oh, how to become a millionaire, oh, how to get up at five o'clock in the morning. But trust me, you will run out of the same sort of content beyond a certain point of time. So everybody in any media always looks for the common denominator. What are the most number of people interested in? So everybody rushes towards that genre. My request to anybody here, do something which hopefully can cater to a global audience that is important because then the audience is bigger but something that is unique and I've seen that in YouTube and eventually it will become in podcasting also is that uniqueness will be rewarded beyond a certain point of time there are YouTube channels I can tell you that are dedicated to ants and they have millions of views 
because all over the world people go in for it so find your comfort area rather than what is the lowest common denominator that everybody is going into thank you so much for your answer sir i'd like to have a follow up a question for this how do you find your niche or a particular thing that you want to talk about in your own podcast could you please help us understand that uh, so um, i would say whatever energizes you so recently we went uh, uh, daily on our episodes would i sustain doing daily episodes if i'm not really interested in what i'm doing not possible it's just that i genuinely love the fact of researching finding out what is going on what is the big political story or what is going on for example in russia and is it really true that putin is smashing the west or or is the opposite actually closer to the fact so when you will want to choose what you want to do yes you should look at what is happening what is successful what are the models that are working but somewhere down the line unless and until you enjoy your own content it's not going to work so if you're a history buff that's good then you do a podcast which is focusing on historical aspects of thing if you love cooking then you open up a cookery uh, podcast if you love converse if you're genuinely a person who loves conversation then open a conversational podcast but remember it's not easy to get guests all the time uh, so so that will remain to be an issue uh, so you have to figure out what is working what is feasible from your end your interest areas your knowledge what is practical now tomorrow you say oh, i'm opening up a podcast i want to have a chat with narendra modi theek hai you keep on dreaming you won't even get rahul gandhi so uh the practicality aspect also needs to be taken care of but i would just say the fulcrum rule is what energizes you what enthuse makes you enthusiastic uh you should go ahead and select that topic perfect sir thank you so much for that answer now sir based on a certain ideology which a lot of people or parents should i say hold in uh, let's say india that is even if their children want to pursue such a field they think that it is not going to be so much rewarding to them and it is very uncertain so how do we deal with this clash which exists very very uh, there are no right and wrong answers to this i mean i can i can go on and talk 5 hours about this topic my father threw out all my debating trophies uh, from the drawing room uh, after i flunked in class 11 uh, and i think he was maybe right in doing that because he saw debating as a reason why i performed poorly in my academics um ultimately it's passion um i still remember when i flunked also and i had promised my parents i won't do debating unless and i prove myself but i couldn't help myself one day and uh, before the half yearly exams i went for a debate and my mom caught me uh, how she caught me was very interesting is because i polish my shoes before i go for a debate i have to look immaculate so she saw, so she saw the shoes absolutely polished and she understood but well she didn't say anything um uh, but yes uh, i i resumed debating after i came first again in class 11 and i proved myself that i'm good in academics see this whole parental versus children wala fight is been there in my time now in your time maybe when you are sitting 5 10 years down the line and giving an interview to the next generation of lamartian students it will be a question for them also i think it has to be a balance between practicality of getting some level of academic qualification done and your passion i am not going to advise to every student in lamartian screw your results focus on your passion and it will you know make you fly not really uh so focus on what your parents are telling you why because they also are not your enemies if you are able to explain to them good but i if you ask me honestly and i did it in class 11 and 12 after i flunked i came first i did my academics i did my debating they do not clash for class 11 and 12 and i would dare say even in college it is a misnomer to say that you cannot handle your academics decently and not follow your passion as well i don't agree with that i've done it could you please help us understand how can a person better manage it because i think uh, especially in schools like ours um, mm. we do have a lot of exposure and because of that uh, sometimes con- concentration in academics is not uh, prioritized so how do we manage that in a better so uh, okay one or two things here um, if you are preparing for iit and then you say that no i also want to be going for a cricketing championship to another city i agree not possible because if you're cracking i i was just talking about normal academics normal degrees degrees etc etc if you're talking about cracking iit that itself has to be a passion the other thing i think a lot of us make a mistake i certainly was going to make a very big mistake is when i got into hindu college after my uh, class 12 so i was very confident at that point of time because i have proven myself i have flunked i have come first i have topped humanities in lamartnia i have got into one of the best colleges in india so Hindu of course had a very active debating society it also had an active dramatic society i got into both 
and i got a lead role in the dramatic society and i was doing uh, i already started winning debates uh, in, in 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 delhi university so my brother siddharth banerji who also happens to be from lomart yeah three years my senior said a very interesting thing he said and he was also in delhi university and he had seen three years of delhi university be- before me he said listen either you do debating and academics or you do histrionics and academics or you do debating and uh, or you do debating and histrionics leave academics so i think somewhere down the line you also have to understand is because lamartnier is giving you this sort of exposure doesn't mean that you have to take every exposure in the world and then forget your academics also so maybe is that the error that is being made because you can only have limited amount of passion and time and you have to choose that you can't say that i want to experiment with 100 different things and then hope to do well in academics also so to that i will say that and i know it's a little bit of unfair to ask students in class 8 9 10 11 12 to know what is their passion but if they are if they introspect a little bit and understand what they are good at and what can work then it would be much better rather than trying to experiment everything under the sun it's difficult i know but if you ask me what are your options flunking doing bad in academics i really don't think that it's an option because your future options do get hammered there so i don't think that really is an option unless and you some like one in a million kind of a person who completely outshines and doesn't need a degree etc etc or the other option is you balance out both or the third option is you don't do anything you put your head down into studying and do studies which i don't agree with so i don't agree with only studying i don't agree with leaving everything and not studying at all so having seen the world having flung having come first having done debating i am saying is that there at your age at the school age where your college and there is a big question mark where you will join after that there has to be some level of academic focus so there i would not disagree with the parents but problem with parents is also their excessive focus and their excessive control which is for you to push back i pushed back which is for you to push back but you have to push back demonstrably so it can't be all about i think i am amazing you can't think you are amazing apne sports mein academics mein debating mein results matter boss you can't always say nahi everybody is cheating the whole world is wrong of course cheating happens and i have had my share of debating mein cheating because it is very 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 uh, you know subjective who's the judge does he like your face etc etc so demonstrate balance explore but you cannot i cannot advise at any level any stage any kind of ki yaar compromise kar lo unless and until you're saying that no boss bhaiya mujhe iit crack karna hai then where is the debate then you've chosen academics as a field then you can't say that main iit bhi crack karunga and main ranji trophy bhi khelunga i mean that would be like one in a million i mean respect to somebody who does that by the way thank you so much sir for that great answer that was extremely comprehensive and was able to solve the doubts which i was having and i was willing mm-hmm. to ask you more questions in that the context is well but you want it all the aspects so thank you so much uh, so my question now to you is that like once we've understood what our passion is how do we reach a particular point wherein your position is stable in such a field for example you were able to get this page back all together in just 4 years with millions of subscribers so what is your suggestion uh, based on this thing so uh, please understand uh, i think uh, a lot of people make this error uh, they confuse passion with stability so what is passion passion is something that makes you alive that gives you purpose of life that makes you want to get up the next day and do something that is passion passion may get you the money may get you the following may get you the fame so first and foremost you have to understand that if you have discovered a passion that itself is a reward in life i would say that i discovered my passion a little late because okay it was speaking whatever i've done in my life is always related to speaking which is debating then it was radio mirchi then it was television but after many many years of doing mainstream media when i started to doing satirical news commentary is when i found my real passion it took its own sweet time but when i started doing that and doing satire etc etc as you mentioned in the introduction selling my house which is the most ballsy thing i've ever done besides flunking and coming first in class um I didn't I didn't know that it will work but there is something that drives you to do it you can't calculate these things oh mujhe passion mil gaya ha theek hai now one year later i will have 1 million subscribers ha and two years later i will buy a mercedes wo to bhul jao so first and foremost understand that those people who actually what is this whole story about engineers quitting everything and restarting as something else what is the story about people giving up a career and starting it is them discovering their passion later on which itself is a gift so first and foremost if there is something that drives you makes you crazy 
gives you intense amount of energy and focus you won half the battle of life there only after that it's to see can it pay for itself can it give you a sustainable income that is where you have to be a little street smart so when we said theek hai satire so have we compromised on satire yes uh, would we like to do more of only satire and less of news only satirical scripts and less of what is happening no but we mashed both because we found that you no know, people expect the information from us and they expect it in a little bit of a satirical format so they don't only want you know jokes and puns but they want the information also so we molded ourselves also so the idea of life is first if you have something that drives you makes you crazy gives you passion gives you energy great then you have to see what is the market for this what is the market can i do this life long otherwise lot of people have a side passion somebody does poetry at home somebody does photography a lot of people have side passions but if you want to make that passion into your real income your life income then you will have to mold it accordingly what the market wants where is the payment where is the money that might require a little bit of molding so no passion is 100% unadulterated as well so there is nothing as the rosy ah i am doing my passion and people are falling at my feet even an artist has to say oh i have to do some commissions so you will see artists write in their bio open for commissions that is they will do their art but to chalao their ghar ka kharcha they will have to maybe paint a wealthy businessman they might not enjoy doing it but they will have to do it because their passion is also earning their money i had quit television in 2012 uh because even then almost 10 years ago even then it was becoming apparent that television does not have the amount of respect the fame uh or the excitement that we thought it used to have in the 90s it had when we were your age when we were in school uh looking at barkha and the rajdeeps of the world going all over the places reporting international conflict reporting it was really really the hot field at that point of time something like the internet is at this point of time right the new the new territory the new unexplored areas um so 2012 i left i went back to radio mirchi uh, five years i did radio so what happened is after doing 10 years of news five years i did radio radio mein fm mein if you know news is technically not allowed people skirt the rule but it is technically not allowed you have to ghumao phirao ko thoda sa baat karna hota hai so radio is all about fun irreverence so that is where entertainment got married with news and i'm like why can't we do fun news that is where this idea came and i started watching the late night american television formats the steven colbert the jimmy kimmel by the way what i do is not anything unique it is only trying to ape and attempt what is happening in american television late night if you watch jimmy kimmel if you want steven colbert uh, john oliver uh, what these guys do we are a we are a poor imitation because if we start to do what they do we'll be in jail very simply so 2018 i was like i want to do this more so i did a little bit as a uh, uh, when i was working in mirchi and when that thing started looking okayish that mm, people are watching this could become a source of revenue the channel could do well so i took that plunge uh, uh, so i needed a runway so i sold the house so i had about 18 months of funds to sustain my i calculated this is my monthly expenditure this is my ghar ka kharcha kind of thing so i had about 18 months to prove myself so by god's grace uh, within 6 to 9 months uh, the channel had sort of broken even broken even why because i was the only one writing i was the only one editing i was the only one shooting so there was only one person so that's what youtube is all about you start it's a very lonely journey a lot of people forget how lonely it is for youtubers to start it's a very 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 intensely crushingly lonely journey because your model is not proven you don't know what is going to happen you, you don't know whether you'll have a job or money at the end of the day uh, you can have the you can have a billion dollars funding i'm just giving a hypothetical situation say for example there is an ex person and he has a billion dollars in funding and then that okay now i will launch my youtube channel there's still no guarantee whether people will like your face or like your channel like your concept or not there's no guarantee even the best of intentions of youtube channels have failed and some accidental youtube channels have become super hits also Uh, by the way when i'm saying youtube it means instagram it means facebook it means podcast it could be anything so after this started working about 6 6 9 about 9 months later i had my first hire and then we slowly 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 built a team uh, we are about half a dozen at this point of time um, and uh, we've recently gone daily uh, and we continue to skirt uh, you know a lot of trouble by keeping sticking to the facts uh, sometimes making light of serious situations uh not taking political sides so that's what we do we get abused by everybody so when a congress guy abuses us and a bjp guy abuses us and an aam aadmi party guy abuses us we feel happy that means we are safe uh till certain point of time uh so so that's where we are we try to be honest to our work uh it's very easy to get swayed by money and influence and by access uh people will come and say that we want to meet you people will come and say we want to give you money uh why don't you do this for us and that for us so we've we've stuck out till now let's see
thank you sir so much for your answer and for uh, going back to your journey and then explaining all these different things to us i'd also like to ask um in a career field such as podcasting which is very new uh, hmm. how could you help us understand what is the reason why the trend of podcasting has skyrocketed in india and what has caused this and to what extent has it impacted the production and consumption of content in india skyrocketed is a relative uh, uh, yardstick from nothing to where it is my advice to anybody um, thinking about a podcast would be think audio visual as much as possible so if you are intending to do a solo podcast put a camera in front of you let it exist on youtube as well and let it exist in audio as well if you're doing an interview with somebody you know I, we do three camera shoots at deshbhak now we do three cameras there are three cameras looking one taking a two shot one at the interviewer one at the person that we are interviewing we can go up to four cameras also if we want but some of our very early interviews is basically one mobile phone put at a distance and two mic two mics running into that phone uh with with there is an attachment that comes that can allow you to fit two mics into one phone and it has 2 million views so we did an interview with ravish like what we are talking like like this uh during covid it was a 2 hour long interview it exists on youtube and it exists as a podcast on spotify and both have done well because some people would like to listen to the conversation and some people would like to see the conversation so my suggestion to anybody wanting to do a podcast is that try to experiment with multiple platforms because security and assurity comes with multiple so we focus on primarily on youtube but we know that tomorrow something could also happen so we have you know uh, hedged our bets also on facebook also on twitter also on instagram therefore we are close to 5 million strong on these four platforms my suggestion is you have to be multimedia in the true sense of the word you have to be multi platform so you can't say i'm a podcaster i exist only on spotify i don't exist on apple so when we started uh, you know our parallel podcasting what we did is we went on anchor fm and from anchor it goes up to seven different platforms automatically you have to reach out to the most number of people people are not going to come to you you, you are not a superstar nobody of us is a superstar people are not going to seek us people are going to find us but you have to put yourself out there to be found nobody is going to search you and so now acknowledging the fact that like whatever we are able to make out after listening to a podcast is that in its essence it is an art of conversation so yeah. how can someone improve their art as a conversationalist and thereafter use it to become a much better podcaster or a better speaker should i say so uh, two points to this a art of speaking and art of conversation both very 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 separate uh, skill sets very separate skill sets so art of speaking is something that i'm sure you can also now tell a few kids at lamartnia what is art of speaking you have to be comfortable with your body you have to be comfortable with what you know you have to research you have to have your bullet points you have to be fluent if you are in front of uh, an audience a little bit of eye contact is also necessary etc etc that's your ability to speak your ability to have a conversation is completely different i went through this whole knowledge shift when i became a radio jockey and i was very very Uh, I'm very thankful is that we had a good training session at Mirchi because we were the first batch of radio jockeys to have launched when radio initially came into India, which is 2002, 2003 in Delhi. Um, the art of having a mic in front of you and treating that mic as a person, that you're having a conversation. You're not speaking down to an audience. You're speaking with an audience. So what happened is when I used to do my show Dil Chahta late at night it was at night so the tube light created an effect where there was a shadow of mine on the uh, studio mirror uh, on the studio window basically so on the window there was a shadow so I it got to a habit where I used to talk to that shadow as a person and you would understand is that uh, RJs do very well who are the ones who are able to connect with the audience who are just speaking to them उन लग रहा है कि RJ मुझसे ही बात कर रहा है So that's the ultimate art of RJ. In the same way, a conversation happening between two people—it's a private conversation. Literally, two people are talking. They are not addressing you; they are talking amongst themselves. But your ability to listen, your ability to comprehend what that person is saying, and then throw your next question, give your whole conversation a direction and a flow—these are talents. These are skills that come after a lot of practice. it can't be just a list of questions a lot of times a statement especially a controversial one would need us a follow on would need more diving into 
so and and that's why joe rogan gets paid this kind of money when 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 he's taken by spotify and said nahi tum youtube chodo tum spotify jao we'll pay you what 120 million dollars or something like that so it is very very important the art of not only speaking but the ability to connect with either the audience or the person that you're interviewing the seen and the unseen is one of the very popular podcasts in india at this point of time and uh, the conversations exist for 3 to 4 hours sometimes 4 hour long conversations and people are actually listening to that has to be something good thank you sir for your answer uh, f- following up to the question uh, that you answered that you have to build a relationship with the audience you have to talk to them you have to talk with the mic right mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. how can freshers in this field produce relevant and updated content for their audience and what are some ways that they can build a genuine relationship with their audience could you please uh, elaborate on that so i um, see uh, the easiest thing is if you're hilarious boss to my life life set away because i mean i have realized this that i am not see a lot of people think satire is jokes uh so a lot of people try to uh, comment trying to insult me saying that you are not funny you are just sarcastic i am like thank you that is what satire is so the funny content in satire is supposed to be this much the sa- the satire sarcasm in is supposed to be this much um if you're funny if you have a funny bone if you can make people laugh i think on social media people are just hungry to be to to laugh and there's a good reason in my opinion there is too much of misery and sadness in this world and that is why news consumption is not the highest amount of consumption there are other things that are being consumed on social media and news is definitely not one of the highest ones um so if you are able to connect with people and make them laugh that's your first that's your first call um but the other things that you can do especially as somebody who is young may not have that kind of experience um as as you guys were talking about is that uh, uh self improvement is big the other very very big thing i have noticed and if i ever do something uh, secondary to what i do on desh bhakt i mean i've always thought about it is uh, guidance on career uh on instagram there is a person called nidhi nagori who does nothing but tells you how to go abroad how to apply how to uh, give applications and i see that you're already copying it down good uh so i am adding value i am not uh, flaunting clothes i am not in a swimsuit uh i am not modeling or i am not dancing which is your usual staple i am just giving you valuable information on how to apply and that is it that is the whole construct of the channel how to apply and better yourself get better uh, go to this country go to that country which country has opened what which visa rule has changed just that so maybe you can find a niche and say that i am an expert at this so always remember expertise is also valued on social media but what are you an expert at college admissions citizenships that is something else also so what students need to do is if they want to get into this they will definitely have to define themselves games i am an expert at minecraft people will fall head over heels minecraft is big but that passion with which you are an expertise because if you're not you'll be exposed in 2 minutes um sir after listening to the podcast a lot of times i've like understood that how many times you need to face with the hatred of the people or should mm. i say some kind of negative comments on that mm. so how do you deal with those things and sir there after go again and present the same things in a much better manner every time you know the irony is that you get hate for doing entertainment content also i mean bhuvan bam gets hate I mean he doesn't even say anything political but he will get hate. So it doesn't matter whether you do politics or not you will still get hate. We do politics. We get tons of hate. How do we deal with it? So there are one or two things. A uh we are very very shameless. On social media please understand you have to be shameless. Let's I'm just making it absolutely clear you have to be shameless. And this is something again I attribute to Lamartnea is that my confidence was built in school because somebody from San Francisco comes and says something do I care a bit? Hello So first and foremost is the ability to be very clearly shameless and therefore say my confidence is not going to be rocked by what the society is telling me who the hell are you one line in a comment section with an x shaped dp you are going to j- decide what my confidence level is going to be one second oh you have abused me i go ahead and thank my abusers so many times i have done that because we forget and especially the people who are nice gentlemanly bhadra lok in bengali we think that we have done nothing wrong so everybody should be happy with us 
I don't know what, why. Even in real life, it doesn't happen, and certainly doesn't happen in social media. I always give this example. You put a two-day-old baby. You put a picture of a kitten. Somebody will find a problem in that and abuse you for that also. What are you talking? Why are you trying to make everybody happy? It is engagement. You are getting abused. Good. It is better than being ignored, and no comments at all. So every abuse is actually a plus sign. Is that your video or your audio is being engaged with? Your engagement scores are going up. Okay. So so it is it is shamelessness. it is knowing that the algorithm is going to reward you for every abuse that you get and knowing see uh, cardi b said this when she took her grammy she actually thanked her haters because even her haters are downloading that song before hating her before commenting on her so you have to appreciate your haters also somebody is taking time out of their lives to passionately hate you to get angry with you to vomit about you give respect to that Once you internalize these things, then all this stops, will stop mattering. Be happy, but I mean, I don't know why we try to make so many people happy. You will not do whatever you do. Okay. Thank you, sir, for that um, answer. I really appreciate you being very candid and frank uh, with, with us. Um, so, moving uh, into the field and career of podcasting, I have one more question which I'd like to ask you, and that is, what are the prerequisites which are required to get into the field of podcasting? Because you talked about there was a video of yours which was shot on uh, your phone and recorded through a small little microphone. Uh, so, a lot of people have this misconception that they do that they do need studio mics or a DSLR. So, what are the essential prerequisites which you believe are required to put up a good show or a podcast? So, the, the the video that it was shot on was a phone. So, that is a prerequisite. So, you know, social media. I I, I was interviewing Bhuvan Bam once, and I said, "What should I do? What should I do? YouTube channel? No, don't think so much. Do it. You know, too much time is spent thinking about social media. Actually, you know what? You are just making excuses for yourself and the brutality of social media is such is that you really don't have an excuse before starting off if you have nothing if you have nothing on earth even a phone you can record high quality audio these days even on a phone if you keep it closely i will i'll get you close to studio quality recording on a mobile phone okay acha chalo nahi you want to be more professional about it so then and this is the irony this is a boya microphone okay if you go on amazon you will get it for 1500 rupees When I launched my YouTube channel, I was using this. I am using it even today. Fifteen hundred rupees Boya microphone, which goes directly into a phone, and there you can hit record. And now, so many podcast applications allow you to publish directly from your phone, so you don't even need a computer. What do you need then? You need value to deliver. Either you're doing swimsuits, you're dancing, or you're doing Instagram kind of stuff. and i always say look the world is such a surprising place my team said nahi nahi let's do instagram i said with this with this face instagram kaise hoga but we added value to the lives of people and we are half a million strong on instagram i'm like really there is space for us on instagram but there was because we were adding value so we said no no hum news karenge news ke memes banayenge we do news memes largely on instagram so you don't this is excuse this is all excuse what you need is a compelling proposition So, if you ask me, what is the requisite? It's not the hardware. It's what are you going to deliver on a consistent basis? It is not going to be a hit in six months. Maybe not even a year. There are many examples that one can give you that became a hit in second or third year. Again, it's a question of passion. Would you do it without the money? Would you do it without the fame? Then only do it. Otherwise, don't. Money, fame is a byproduct. Every thumbnail, every introduction should be a clickbait. We understand clickbait as a wrong thing. Clickbait is something that baits you to click. that is not a problem every thumbnail that you should make it should be a click bait the question is do you deliver on that bait once you are inside that's all so whatever content you have ensure your title your thumbnail is a click bait and is speaking loads and even more it's like a movie trailer usually a movie trailer is better than the movie we all agree on that right a trailer is generally more enthralling than the entire movie because it has the best bloody clips of the movie and it stops just before the climax Now we sometimes go ahead and abuse the trailer. Usually, when the movie is crap, when the movie doesn't live up even half, even quarter of the trailer. So all I'm saying is click bait, karo, but deliver on that bait. Uh, sir, although I don't want to mention this, but we have come to the last question for today, and it is, sir, if you could share any piece of advice to the young podcasters, what would it be? Uh, I think this is uh, 
the advice is going to be the same that we started off with we mentioned in the middle also uh, because i live it i breathe it uh, unless and until you are passionate about doing what you want to do unless you are passionate about the subject with which you are starting your podcast video podcast video uh, on youtube or on a podcasting platform unless and until it doesn't move you you will not be able to sustain it and if you are not able to sustain it then you will not be able to do it in a long term and unless and until you do it in a long term you will not be able to get, get any success because i will find it very hard to find podcast success stories uh, within a few podcast or within the first two three months it takes time sometimes years and so don't start off with riches in mind or fame in mind start off with passion in mind and energy in mind if you enjoy doing it chances of money and fame coming are much 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 higher if you enjoy doing it in the first place all right sir thank you so much for that answer and with this we come to the end of the podcast with mr akash banerji thank you so much sir for being a part of this episode of the lamartia career fair it was a pleasure talking to you